You're listening to Hashtag No Filter with Zach Peter. That's me, your naturally platinum blonde pop culture connoisseur. I'm the reality TV junkie, self-improvement addict, and host with only the hottest tea spilled fresh weekly. For more hot takes, go and give me a follow at Just Plain Zach. I always keep it funny and I always keep it cute. And if you're like me and you want to stay up to date with the latest reality tea, just go and give us a follow at No Filter with Zach on the Instagram. Or you can always join our private Facebook group. The link is in the description below. Guys, you're gonna wanna go and get my new Drag Me I Dare You Rosé. It is out right now. We have the four OG cans, which we launched back in June. Those are still available, but we have a new limited edition Potomac can. It's cute. It's purple. It's going to make you feel sexy when you're drinking it by the pool, sneaking it into your Uber, doing a nice little pregame before you hit the club. Whatever you want to do, you can do it this weekend. They are now ba- they're stronger than ever because they're not... Last time we launched, they were 12.8% alcohol. Now they're 14% alcohol by volume. So you're going to want to drink responsibly, but you're going to get litty city but you're not gonna be hung over because there's less than a gram of sugar it's delicious it's light it's crisp it's fizzy and it's on sale right now for a limited time only while supplies last go to nofilterwine.com uh last time i checked we were already halfway sold out of our stock so you're gonna want to stock up so that you have enough potomac cans to get you through the rest of the season go right now nofilterwine.com All right. Well, we have so much to break down today, and I'm excited because uh, Here to Help Me Dish is a fellow reality TV junkie. Please welcome the face and the voice behind the Drag Me Monique Instagram account, Miss Sophia. Drag Me Monique. Yes. Drag Me. (laughs) I can't wait to get my Drag Me Rosé. I had to have it shipped to New York, but... um, I can't wait, but I do have some libations while we spill this tea. Love it. Thanks for having me. Sip yes. some drinks, spill some tea. I've been loving the Drag Me Monique Instagram account. You give us such hot takes. Thank you. I mean, I'm still growing it. Um, it's a process, um, but there's more to come. I've been booked and busy, so I haven't done as much as I should, but I've been keeping up on all of the housewives and everything else. Bravo. So... I'm ready. Let's do it. Okay, so I know we've had lots of thoughts about the most recent episode of Beverly Hills, um, especially Garcelle versus Dorit. So over the weekend, Demois ended up posting something to their Instagram story. And I always like to take their information with a grain of salt because it's usually just people sending in anonymous tips that are unverified. But so they released a tip or they sent in a tip claiming that Garcelle is considering leaving Real Housewives of Beverly Hills because she feels like her cast members are too inauthentic. I saw that and I saw like a sort of subliminal response from her end, which kind of alluded to that statement that it might be true, which I absolutely hope that it's not. Um, But, you know, I've noticed that about Garcelle. You know, she seems to understand the assignment, but when she gets the backlash from her other cast members, she like kind of scares away from it or runs away from it. We saw it at the scene with Jerry where she like literally got up from the table and was ready to just leave. And we've seen it in other incidences. And I just, oh, I don't know if she realizes it or not, but in the Bravo universe, People seem to be on her side, but yeah. I guess when she's filming, she feels outcasted and outnumbered in that sense. So it's interesting. You're right. She does tend to run away, but in the confessionals, she's very, very shady. And she has a lot to say when she's in the confessionals. But when she's actually, you know, filming with the other women, maybe it is that she feels kind of on her own island or she does feel ostracized. I like Garcelle. I know people like are living for Garcelle. I don't know if. I'm necessarily living for her or Sutton. I feel like I just naturally I'm the type of person that's like, okay, if the crowd is is doing this and the crowd is loving that, I'm going to sit over here and objectively just be devil's advocate and just kind of try to look at the other side. Um, I guess that's just in my nature. I never follow the fray. I kind of just march to the beat of my own drum. But I mean, I don't dislike Garcelle and I don't dislike Sutton. But I do love Dorit. And I think with Dorit, I was like, Dorit is like one of my favorites on the cast. And I know that's an unpopular opinion, too, because people hate Dorit. What, what, what are your thoughts on the Dorit versus Garcelle beef? 
Well, I had an unpopular opinion mm. and mine was that, I mean, people were so agitated by the way Dorit came for Garcelle, but I'm the type of person who likes to look at everything from different perspectives. Right. And while I would say that the points, Garcelle had points in all of the times that she sort of called Dorit out, but also Dorit has a right to defend herself. And I don't know if a lot of people can recall this, but last season during the reunion, there was something going on. I believe it may have been with um, Garcelle and Rena or Garcelle and Kyle. And Dorit tried to interject in favor of Garcelle and Garcelle shut her up. Garcelle was called on to read like, like she shushed her. And there's and and even in interviews with last season, she's made remarks about um, Dorit's fashion, which like, how dare you, first of all. But I do remember she threw a little shade, like, well, I think she, uh, Erica did it better or w- whatever it was. She's coming for Dorit. She yeah. does. She comes and for even the ladies. Right, wrong, or indifferent. Dorit has a right to defend herself and Dorit read her. She kind of read her. Do you, did you see how Dorit lowered her voice? Yeah. She dropped the bass to imitate Garcelle. I, I laughed. I thought it was funny. And I get why where she's coming from. Yeah. Even I, though I heard in favor of Garcelle. But yeah. No. I, I mean, I definitely think that Dorit overshot her mark with this one and she maybe went a little too hard at guard. Like, I would think like, okay, maybe pull her aside and like the two of you have a conversation. And, you know, I think to out her in front of a group that Garcelle already feels ostracized from and already kind of doesn't feel like she's included with the, the main girls. Like, I get that Dorit definitely overshot the mark. Um I still love Dorit. I know people hate her. I love her for her fake accent. I love her for her over-the-top, flashy Louis Vuitton outfits. It's so bad, and it's so ridiculous, and it's so tacky, and it's everything that I love about her for. Um, I like Dorit as well. And she's she's arguably the best dressed mm-hmm. housewives housewife she got them to elevate the fashion on the show she did that erica got them to elevate the glam and dorit got them to up their fashion game because kyle was shopping at target in the first few seasons and kyle was honest about that when dana walked in with her twenty five thousand dollar sunglasses kyle's like my dress is from target right i honestly i think i would dress more like kyle if i was an actual housewife on a realistic level but if i'm going to be objectively fair I feel like Erica can get a little costumey with the glam. Yeah. Dorit nails it. Dorit just gets it. And actually, Kyle, I love her accent too. I, I can do such a good Dorit accent. But do you know what, Adele? I don't think you do understand, actually. Oh my God. I, I, I live for Garcelle. I so live good. for Garcelle. Yeah, I do. I have a really good, and I do a good Erica Jane as well. See, but which I can't wait to get to that. Yes, we'll get into Erica because she's being sued. Well, she's being sued right now, but like, People, I think, read too much into the headlines, but we'll get into all the Erica stuff. But with um, with Dorit and Garcelle, like, I feel like I like both of them and I'm not really picking a side. And I feel like it's OK to do that. And we don't allow each other to do that very often. We're like, no, you have to be on one side or the other side or else, you know, we're not friends. And I'm like, but why can't I like that they're both characters on a reality show that are disagreeing and I enjoy that there's a disagreement, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I disenjoy one of them necessarily. I feel like that happens along with the Bravo verse. I've had a lot of people leave me some little shady comments and it's like, can we normalize, you know, that because people get so biased that they tend to lose perspective yes you know and everyone has their own perspective and there's different angles to look at things just because you're team someone or favor someone more that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be able to remove the lens to understand where another person may be coming from like let's normalize not always picking a team and picking a side and like you know looking at things from a balanced perspective but that's america for you it's always like we're so easily manipulated into two categories and then it's like we have our team and we have to root for them yeah but we're alike in that way yeah like we're like you know i'm team the show and whatever's good for the show exactly that's why i was like i I mean do i like do i care if brandy and denise really hooked up no because it was great for the show and it was one of their best seasons in a while you know right speaking of which i really don't like how rinna is like what i loved and hated about rinna 
was that she held everyone accountable, had no filter, would spill all kinds of unnecessary, were there people doing coke in your bathroom, tea, mulch, housing, all kinds of stuff. And now when it comes to something so serious, she's not holding Erica to any kind of accountability or questioning. And that makes me question her. Yes. Really does. Like, yes and no. Like it? yes and no. Like I, I, I get that. Like I'm a little disappointed in Rena. Like if we're just looking at it from the show perspective, I'm disappointed in her in the sense that like she is the one that's like, let me hold you accountable. She is the one that pokes and prods and pushes the storyline forward and asks all the questions that we want to know. However, she's fulfilled that role for several seasons right now, and everybody hates her for it every single season. So it's like, how do you expect her to keep filling that role when everybody? hates her for stirring the pot like that's what she was great at was being that pot stir but I feel like people have burned her so much for doing exactly that I mean the same thing like with Teddy I mean I know a lot of people hate Teddy but she also filled a role on the show that was like to push a storyline forward I wasn't a big Teddy fan I always found her boring and just like particularly uninteresting but I understood the role that she filled on the show. I would like Rena to be a little messier like she normally is. But then it's like, mm-hmm. but then we start the season off with Garcelle reprimanding Rena for her behavior last season towards Denise. And she's like, you were too hard on Denise and Denise was your friend. And now all of a sudden now Rena's being a friend the way that she was being grilled for last season and at the beginning of this season. And people don't like that she's being a friend now. I mean, granted right. the circumstances <laughs> between the affair. <laughs> Do you, do you think Rena is not is not putting any heat on Erica because of the backlash? I think I mean I was watching her interview when she was on Watch What Happens Live and Andy asked her that question. He's like, "Well, what is it? You know, people are saying that you are holding Erica to a different standard than you held um, Denise Richards last season." And she's just like, "Well, you know, at the beginning of the season, Garcelle and I sat down and we talked, and Garcelle told me that you know I wasn't a good friend, and so I'm trying to be a better friend, and I'm working on that, you know." not making the same mistakes that I've made in prior seasons. And that was the first time for me. I was like, okay, I get that. Is that what I want to see from a reality star on this show? Not necessarily. I want to see her drag people the way she's drugged Lisa Vanderpump and Yolanda and, and Denise Richards and Brandy Glanville. Like I want to see Lisa Rinna play that character and that role on the show. But I understand that now she's like, well, you guys hate me for playing that role. That like, is it still even worth playing that role? And now we see her playing the opposite role and people continue to hate her for playing the opposite role. Granted, the circumstances are way different. You know, Munchausen and an affair are very different from, you know, this widely publicized scandal of, you know, embezzlement and fraud and taking advantage of of innocent victims the circumstances are a lot different. So I am just curious as to maybe her motive behind it. Cause I mean, we also see her kind of just sitting back and watching Sutton play that role and kind of, you know, laughing at Sutton as Erica's coming for Sutton. I don't know. I think it's, I don't know. I know people hate her though. I, I, li- I like Rena. She annoys me, but I, I love her because she's good for the show. And let me tell you something I think about Rena. I don't know mm. if she's a Scorpio or not, tell me. but I feel in my intuition that she has it. She's got it out for Garcelle because she's not over the fact that Garcelle said that made that statement about her child's eating disorder and mm. her dancing half naked on the internet. Mm. I think she still got it out for Garcelle. And I feel like we're going to see something unravel, like the big payback. I think she's trying to reel her in right now, throwing her a birthday party, Blah, blah, blah. But she still she still has that there. I I feel like I don't know. Could be I do. I no, I, I agree with you. But I think the motive may be a little more than just the eating disorder comment and the dancing thing. I think it's because Garcelle reprimanded Lisa on this public platform. And now Lisa's like, OK, you're going to try to embarrass me and make me look like a bad friend and make it look like you were a better friend to Denise. Now I'm slowly going to come around and, you know, right, be the sniper from the side. Garcelle, like, well, why would you say that? Why did you say she she questioned Garcelle? And it's like, really, Lisa, that's something you would have done. Yeah. But she's doing that because she knows she's still got it out for Garcelle. She's I think trying she to play it. I agree. I think yeah. she has it out for Garcelle. Um, and I hope that there's more of that to come. So then we are both on the same page that we think Garcelle should come back next season. Absolutely. Absolutely. I just feel like Garcelle needs to 
I think once she sees the support, then maybe she'll she'll toughen up because she's even pointed out the divide. She said it to, to Crystal. She said there's a there's clearly a divide here. And it must be really difficult being the only black woman on it yeah. on a Beverly Hills cast or being a black woman in Beverly Hills, period, yeah. or in the industry that she's in. So she's she's used to that sort of uncomfortableness. And it might be a little intimidating for her, but I need her to level up because we need her. She's great for the show. Garcella is not afraid to to pry into your business and ask you questions. And she ain't no saint either. Garcella is not a saint <laughs> at all. You know, people are like, she's a saint and she's not like, how are you going to spill somebody's business and be like, if you don't mind me saying, and not even giving them a second to respond before you just completely spill the tea. Like she knew what she was doing and I'm glad she did it. She understood the assignment, but yes. a saint, she isn't great for the show. She is. Stay on board, Garcelle, please. Yes, and I think she will. I don't think she's going anywhere. I think she likes to do these little teases on social media and in interviews of like, well, I don't know. I, she wants to be on. She loves the show. She wants to be on the show. She's going to be on the show for a while, and I'm here for it. We can keep Sutton. We can keep Crystal. I love Crystal. I I don't know why people don't like Crystal. Right now, yeah, I agree. I think Crystal's my favorite this season. Um, I love Crystal. I love all three of them. I think they're yeah. each bringing something different. And I love the the veterans. You know, they've been around. They're, you know, doing their thing. This they're is playing their own. And we had discussed this on your live before that. This is the perfect ensemble. Even Kathy and Kathy mm-hmm. definitely becoming a friend of. Because she just don't even care. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she just, just doesn't no, care. No, we need to. I, we, I, I love it. We need to keep. But she interjects when she needs to. Yes. She interjects when she needs to. And she says some pretty bold statements like, well, you're going to need the practice. Like she says a lot of bold statements. And I, I live. I live for Kathy. Well, also because she doesn't have much skin in the game. She's like, I get to come and be at a dinner party and kind of just sit here and, you know, be funny and like she doesn't have any risk in any of it uh, which is why we need to keep her as a friend of we need to protect Kathy Hilton because once we bring her as a full time they're going to get into all the Hilton family drama we're going to end up hating her the same way we did when we watched the Paris Hilton documentary how quickly right. people forget how much they hated her from the Paris documentary right I totally agree with you on that and like she's smart she's one of the smart Jessica Simpson like ditzy smart she's always doing p- product placements mm-hmm. she's she, she, she's smart and she doesn't get herself involved in the drama at all you mm-hmm. know and I, I I live I love I live for Kathy Hilton I do too okay let's talk about Erica Jane getting sued by the bankruptcy trustee so I know this has made a lot of headlines over the weekend, but I don't know if people are aware that this isn't news. This isn't anything new. Like they've been suing her for the twenty five million um, that they they just had to prove the case and actually put together all of the financials that link that estimated twenty five million to an actual accumulated twenty five million. So the lawsuit has been in process for a while. They've been coming after her for that money. Now it's just being amended and formalized a little bit more. I mean, I have a feeling she's gonna she's gonna get away with this. Um, I don't think that she's uh, exactly innocent, and I don't think she's yeah. exactly guilty. Yeah. And she, I mean, this is like the scandal of the year, and I, Zach, I cannot wait to see how this all turns out, and I cannot wait for Lifetime and other networks to make a complete movie out of this yes. she had tweeted the other day that she's bored with this the only people who are bored with this are the Gerardis. everyone else and they mama know that this season is just like who could have predicted that you were going to cap someone who was going to be involved in a scandal literally worth millions and millions if not hundreds of millions accumul- in accumulation yeah. worth of money as of right now, yeah, as of right now, the estimate is that he owes over, what is it, 101 million? 101 million dollars is the estimated, the accumulation of uh, loans that he was taking out, clients that he didn't pay, and the um, and some employees that he never paid, like just all of this debt that he racked up. Now, I also want to clarify that I don't know if it was necessarily 100 million 
that he took because a lot of the loans that he was taking out were very high interest loans that he it doesn't look like he was paying back. So I think a bit a good percentage of that hundred mil is also interest that has been accumulated over the past several years from loans that he never ended up paying back. Like credit card debt. If you end up, you know, charging a bunch of stuff to a credit card and you don't pay those that those credit card payments, the interest accumulates and then the total is way okay. more than you ever spent or the, yeah, than you ever took out originally. So a little bit of clarification there. But so what they're accusing her of in the amended st- uh, filing is that they are saying that she was collecting the funds through her EJ Global LLC, right. but she was filing her income from EJ Global on her personal taxes. Now, I want to start to look at all of the different taxes. I know I have... Um, I have all 500 pages of the paperwork that was filed that I'm still trying to sift through and I'm Al Woodsing my way with the highlighters to understand it all. But she created a new company, which is Pretty Mess Inc., which is separate from EJ Global. And it looks like she created that once she separated from Tom and was, you know, trying to bring in any money that she's currently bringing in from housewives, from brand endorsements into this into this other company. Smart. She's smart. It's a smart business move. Um, is it criminal necessarily? No, because this is new money that she's bringing in on her own that's going into her own company. She's likely going to have to pay that back because the other thing that I think people are confusing with this $25 million is people are thinking that he was giving her direct cash transfers into her EJ Global bank account. And now we're, in looking through the finances, we're realizing that he wasn't giving her money necessarily. He was paying for her Amex bills and her um, expenses that funded the EJ Global music career or the Erica Jane music career. Sorry. So he I'm was showering paying. her with really yeah. expensive jewelry, get jewelry and shoes and wardrobe and, you know, all of these expensive trips to Mykonos to perform for a night. Like all of that was being funded. And now we're realizing mm-hmm. that it was being funded by Girardi Keys company money. Which we're now right. realizing and, and was stolen money. I have with, this is the problem that I have. The only problem is that she's way too intelligent. And as Sutton said, ignorance can be an excuse at this point. Because if you turn the blind eye, I, I, I would, in her case, would turn the blind eye on purpose. If I was in her shoes yep. and I met a rich old guy who wanted to take care of me and throw money at me, I would also turn a blind eye. I don't need to know where the money is coming from. But I think at some point she got a heads up. And if she didn't get it from Tom himself, she got from somebody close in that circle. And that's why she divorced him. And it killed me when she's like, do you want to know who your real friends are? We'll lose everything and be who sticks around. And it's like, well, honey, that same sentiment can be applied to your marriage and how Tom took you from rags to riches. And now when shit hit the fan, you're clawing out. And that and that also screams a little bit of guilt to me. Because you yeah. could be and been like, I didn't know. Yeah. Right? No, I I agree. I think it's easy when you are a housewife in Beverly Hills, not on the show, not on the reality TV world, but just uh, this is why most of them don't go on reality TV. You know, the husbands don't want any of their stuff to be exposed and the wives are just they don't ask questions like I'm. that's why for me, I'm like, I believe at the beginning she was like, he's powerful. He's a shark in the courtroom, but I'm not going to ask any questions. I don't want to go to the bank. I don't want a debit card because I I don't want. Yeah, I don't want to know. I think people, it's not that she was ignorant and stupid. It was that she was ignorant and smart because if you don't know, smart. you're not culpable. You know, that's why everyone exactly. keeps saying, everyone keeps saying, oh, the Bethany Frankel quote of you can't be smart and stupid at the same time. I think she was smart and she was smart enough to be stupid in this case. Exactly. It Sometimes was, you just got to know when to not ask. This is a woman who was raised by a woman who was a young mom, a mm-hmm. teenage mom, I believe. And even Erica herself was a young mom, single mom. I'm pretty sure she was a stripper. She said she worked at a strip club. She didn't clarify if she was a stripper or not. But I was also a dancer. So I know you get a lot of game. And when you have those Hollywood dreams, 
Like mm-hmm. she bagged Tom. I don't Ambition. think that was real genuine love. I think that it was genuine love, but not the in love makes my heart go pit a pat of love. Yeah. She knew. And when you get from this stage of life to that stage of life, it's expensive to be me. You turn the black, you take your money and you stay, you don't ask any questions. It's like the mafia. Yep. I didn't know what he was doing. I didn't know he killed 50 people. And I, we were taught, you don't ask questions in yeah. this life. Same thing, you exactly. Know? Like, you know, there may be some shady shit going on, but you're like, if I don't know, then when the feds come knocking on my door, I don't have any questions to answer, you know? And, and right. but also to be fair at the same time, um, like he was, his face was on many magazine covers. He was getting all of these awards. He was winning all of these lawsuits and being praised for that by the city and by the press that like, To an extent, like you kind of almost want to be like, oh, well, if that's the narrative that's being put out there, it's easy to kind of just believe that he's on the cover of, you know, lawyer of the year. He's winning all of these awards. Yeah. Then he probably is winning all these big cases and, you know, bringing in the big bills because he's a big badass lawyer and he's going to intimidate you and and win in court. You know that I don't know if that was necessarily. I saw the documentary. Uh, and it wasn't until I saw the documentary when I saw other key lawyers saying, but we were still like, how can you afford this lifestyle? I don't know how much lawyers make, but I know they make a lot. And everyone's parents wants them to be a doctor or a lawyer. It didn't connect to me that that kind of lifestyle doesn't equate yeah. with that kind of career. Yes, you can have a very successful life of, of richness, but not to that degree. And I wouldn't have yeah. known. Well, I mean, but you I think to an extent you can, because look at the lawsuits that he was winning. These were hundreds, hundreds of millions of dollars that he was winning for his clients. And he just wasn't giving them, you know, the money. But I think it's it's crazy to see how he got away with this for so long and how, you know, you lose faith in the city and in the the state and in the California state bar who was allowing him to get away with this. But then you see that he was making donations to them annually and he had very close connections to the people that were working at the and state bar. Period. They always say lawyers are like, you know, they understand the system. They can be really big yeah. snakes. I've had a mom who's had many different injuries and things like that and she can't even read English. And I'm when I tell you, I'd be like, mom, you should have done way more than what you did. But I don't have the degree or the yeah. education. I think now I'd probably look into it deeper. But at the time when it happened growing up, just like Garcelle said with her sister, I think that this is going to shed a light on oh, yeah. the, the legal system and, and, and lawyers and the shade that they can play. You know, they just know so much more than the average individual that they represent. So. Right. They're smart and they're savvy. And you also have to like remember, like to your point where you said that, you know, your parents want you to grow up and be a doctor or a lawyer. They don't want you to be a doctor or a lawyer because they think you're going to save the world. They want you to be a doctor or a lawyer because they want you to get that coin. They want you to be rich. Like that's the ambition. That's the capitalist mindset of America. Like we all want to be rich. It's all aspirational to have a lifestyle that we can't afford. That's really what it is. Pretty much. Yeah. So, you know, I just can't wait to see this all unfold. And the thing is, on times we don't want to have that moral obligation, but the court will see to it that we do have the moral obligation. And and maybe there's going to be some payout on her end. But I think she's playing it. She's she's cracking under this pressure. But I think she's going to be able to see it through pretty um unscathed, if you will. I think we'll if see. anything, she's just going to end up having to pay a lot of money. Um, I mean, I want to talk to like a bankruptcy lawyer to see like what her angle is that she could play to get out of paying this money. Not because I want to support her, but I would want to see like, is it possible for her to get out? I mean, there's the 25 million that they're coming after her for whether or not they're going to get that. I mean, it's also interesting. I saw that the special counsel for the bankruptcy trustee tweeted out, um, bank statements, which originally, or not bank statements, credit card statements, which originally when I saw those, I was like, holy shit, this is the nail in the coffin for her. But then in actually looking at the statements, they were personal Amex credit card bills. And so it wasn't like an EJ Global credit card. It wasn't a Girardi Keys credit card that she was using. They're taking these charges from her personal Erica Girardi. Didn't she 
she say she didn't have a credit card though? She said she didn't have a debit card. So debit card is what le- is the oh, your bank okay, card. Okay. Um, credit card is really just how most of these housewives get around. Daddy gives you a credit card with an unlimited limit, and you just go. And as long as it doesn't get, you know, as long as the transaction goes through at Neiman Marcus, she's not asking questions. And so now we're seeing like fantasy. Exactly, Daddy, right? Give me a card. Give me a platinum <laughs> Amex. Give me a black card. Um, and so these were all, these were personal credit cards, personal Amex cards that were hers and Tom's. And so he was just paying off those credit card bills with Girardi Keys money, which we now realize was stolen money from victims that he never gave that money to. So that was a clarification that I learned over the weekend was these aren't, it wasn't like she had a a Girardi Keys issued credit card that she was using herself. She was just using her personal credit card that then he was paying with his company money. So okay. does that make it worse for her, more incriminating? I mean, I don't know. People keep asking, like, well, is she guilty? Is she going to serve time? I don't think she's going to serve any time. There's, She hasn't been charged with anything criminally. And, like, as of right now, I don't think they can charge her with anything criminally. We know that they were going to depose her business manager, Michael Ullman and her lawyer both were supposed to be deposed in court, I believe, last week. That never ended up happening. Um, I believe that was delayed or I mean, all I know is it didn't end up happening, which I assume. I mean, if you're going to depose somebody, the only reason you bring them in court to question them is because you have something on them that you want them to reveal. So if you don't end up deposing them, that just tells me that maybe you don't have all your ducks in a row and you're not ready to actually question them because you don't have a solid case against them and you don't want to waste the efforts now when if you really do have something, you're going to save it for when you can actually nail them in court. So neither of them ended up appearing in court, not on their own accord. I believe they were both willing to appear, but for whatever reason, it ended up getting delayed, which tells me that they're not prepared to hear that. $600,000 in legal fees and they were asking where where she was getting the money to pay it from and she refused to supply them with whatever receipts to back that up. Um, But I don't believe everything I read. But uh, it did so raise an eyebrow. My theory with that, though, is I think there may be because a lot of people are suspecting that she has a sugar daddy, which would be the smart way for her to do it is for somebody it else. Ideal. Yeah, is to I mean, only because they can't go into those finances. If the money's coming from somebody else and they're not legally authorized to go into that other person's bank accounts, like any Joe Schmo can be like, I'm going to pay her rent and here's the credit card, you know, and they're responsible for making sure those payments happen on her behalf. Only her finances are the ones that are being subject to questioning. So only her finances would be the only ones they would need. So I know she's turned over her financial documents, but there are certain expenses like her living expenses or like her legal fees that we don't know how those are being paid. The theory is that she has some other sugar daddy that's paying for it for her. Right. I had heard Army Hammer a long time ago. Oh, yeah. I heard about Army Hammer, Scooter Braun. Yeah. It just made so much sense, though, because, you know, Erica seems so dumb. And what I heard was he likes to be he's into that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's true or not, but it made for a compelling story. I completely very- forgot about Army Hammer. That's right. He was rumored to be having an affair with her. Scooter like, Braun. Like, next door to the house that she's yeah. renting out right now. And blah, blah, blah. And he's and kinky all and she's came out kinky. In the media, so they put her on pause. Okay. Imagine if it's true. The that, scandal of it all. That I would, would love, be- I would love for it to be true. I would love for that to be part of the lifetime movie. Too hot. She's too fine. She's too fly for you to expect me to believe that she was sitting on senior citizen oh, team no, no. the last 20 years without sneaking out and around and about. I don't she even think how to keep that low. I don't think she even needed to sneak out. I'm pretty sure they would have had an arrangement because we knew he was sleeping around and fooling around for years. I'm pretty sure at right, some point her knowledge. But supposedly, yeah. I've read a couple of articles that she was privy to it, and I believe it. Well, yeah, I mean, and then she revealed on the show that she knew that he was sleeping around, and she, if he didn't come home, she didn't really question it because she assumed he was with one of his other um, mistresses. Right, I'd be happy, like, good, hump her. Yeah, Leave me alone. let Just her, yeah, card. let her take care of you, and I'll go find me some army <laughs> hammer. Army can hammer me tonight. <laughs> <laughs> right. I would not be mad. Like, girl, let him cheat. Like, 
Thank you for takes keeping the, that yeah, off my takes back. Takes that responsibility off my back. Right. <laughs> Just tell me when you need me to show up at a gala and I'll be there. Right. I know how to be the arm candy. And I, she, Erica is so brilliant to me. She's very brilliant. She comes from a hard knock life. And, and the thing that I love about reality TV is that no matter how well trained you are, we will see those cracks. It's such an introspective mm -hmm. look yep. into how yep. people really are. And you can try to play the role as good as you can, but eventually those cracks show. Yep. And it's really brilliant. I love it. You I agree. Can, you can come bring my house for a drink. <laughs> refill. Thank you. Oh, man, I love it. Um, but Cheers if I, again. Cheers. Yes. I like how you have the crate challenge going on in the back, but with cans instead. Oh, yeah. Boom. Product Love placement. It. Love it. Um, but if I and not to get too off from um, key, I just wanted to say something really quick because you had mentioned something about Bravo's chat room. Mm. And um, I just wanted to insert this real quick before going to the other subjects that we're gonna uh, cover. I totally agree with you. I feel like this is a journalistic role. And the thing with casting people who don't have I think Porsche's great on Dish Nation, right? But when I watch the show, there's definitely they they miss pacing and cues. There's certain pacing and cues that you have to pay attention to when you're doing these sorts of things. The last one that I saw was with Heather Dubrow, Dubrow and she did such an amazing job. She was able to back and forth with them even when the cues were being missed. And I think that the show should be hosted by people who are not cast members on the yep. show. I, I can agree. see something like Michael Rappaport yourself. You know what it is. You need so, people that yeah. understand the technicalities of hosting. You know what I mean? I love Giselle exactly. and I love Portia on their respective shows. They're great personalities and they would be great to be in. They're great interviews. They're not great interviewers. They're not great anchors. They don't know how to push a show forward. They don't know how to like, there are so many technical things. Like you have to make sure you there's like you said, the pacing and that you have to keep track of the time and you have to make sure, you know, you're, you're, directing the train to go where it needs to go and you need to hit the brake slowly when you need you're approaching a stop and you need to speed things up when you know yeah. you're a little behind or whatever the case is you need to be able to control that train neither of them right. know how to do that and I think Bravo chat room is just it's a filler while Andy Cohen is on vacation right now but like I don't know if I need like that's like the bad filler you get yeah, in Sherman Oaks for five dollars hire us Yes. Put that out there yeah. and, and maybe a Michael Rappaport or, or Danny Pellegrini, you know, like it's, and people who have sort of unbiased opinions. Yes. You're going to pass a housewife. They're going to have biased opinions. Yes. That doesn't work in this field. But I just want to say that about the Brown chat. Especially having like Giselle interview Karen on chat room. Like we already know that dynamic is not going to work and it's not going to provide a, a good show. Necessary. Right. No. And I love Portia, and I think she almost she almost has it, but there, there needs to be some fine tuning there. And then also, so I just because she already is a cast member, I, I have a little bit of a problem with that. Yes. Okay. Let's talk about Margaret and Teresa. They apparently have had a big falling out in Nashville. We saw some footage, some cell phone footage of them filming and they were in a heated argument in Nashville. Apparently mm -hmm. Margaret is bringing up the rumors about Ed, uh, not about Eddie, sorry, about Louis, Teresa's Louis. current boyfriend. Apparently, well, I mean, I've heard a lot of rumors about him. He has a negative past. He, you know, there are allegations of domestic uh, disputes with his exes. <laughs> They've all spoken out. He has been labeled a cheater, a philander, People have said that he's fame hungry. They, I've also heard that he may be like a sex addict. Lots of rumors basically painting him as a very shady dude. It sounds like Margaret's now bringing all of this up on the show and Teresa ain't having it. She unfollowed Margaret on Twitter or sorry, on Instagram. Mm -hmm. What do you think about Marge this season? We know that she she brought up the cheating allegations with Jennifer's husband. Now we see that she's bringing up stuff about Louie and Teresa I think Marge is a bit of a straight shooter and I can appreciate that. Um, I also, the little investigation that I did on Louie from the jump, he does give me slight Dirty John vibes. Mm, slight, mm -hmm. slight. But I haven't seen enough of him to completely confirm on that sentiment. Same. 
But like I've seen some videos where I'm like, oh, this guy's a little, he's a little weird, you know. Now here's a woman who just got out of jail, just got divorced, went through all these legal things, lost both of her parents. I think she's very vulnerable. And then here's this guy hollering at you who is clearly her type. He's got Juicy Joe all over him. Like that's so her her flavor, you know? So uh, when you're vulnerable and, and I think she's a tough cookie, but I think when it comes to love, because we've seen her put up with a lot with Joe Judice, she can put some blinders on. Mm-hmm. So I'm really looking forward to the season of Real Housewives in New Jersey, because I think that's when, like I said, the thing about the camera, you can try to be as big of a character as you want, but them cracks will come forward. Them cracks will reveal themselves after a few drinks. You forget them cameras are there. So I can't wait to see how it's going to play out. But I also think Marge also, she's not like these other girls that cower to Teresa. Mm -hmm. Teresa has done a lot of dirty stuff to Marge to the point that I would never even be her friend. You tell somebody to pull my hair, you know. So I think Marge is very calculated and she's very smart. And if she knows or finds out anything, she's going to she understands the assignment. She's going to call it out and she's going to say something. And Teresa never likes when people call her out. So I feel like this season of Jersey is going to be juicy, juicy, Joe, juicy. I think it's going to be better than last. Like last season started off great with the Jackie versus Teresa stuff. But now we Mm -hmm. have like two major we have Margaret versus Jennifer. We have Jennifer being on the outs. We have the new girls coming in. Now we have this Margaret versus Teresa stuff that I think there's going to be enough me and enough feuds. I mean, and I love when Teresa actually is involved in like a feud with somebody like Jackie was like the Chihuahua, you know, you can't like it wasn't right. a fair fight. Like Teresa was just like ripping her apart to the point where like, you know, the Chihuahua was just like shaking in the corner. And then it's like you feel bad because it's like now, you know, the pit bull and the Chihuahua, you like really it's not a fair like fight. With Jackie Schneider? Jack- What's her name? Jack- Gold, 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 yeah. Jackie Gold Schneider. Gold Schneider. Yeah. I think Jackie, I mean, come on, like the way she kept like breaking down and crying. And then we have the scene with her and her hair and in, in where were they at? It, oh, in uh, Jersey, the Jersey Shore. Like, I think Teresa was definitely. Teresa definitely got to her. But I think Jackie really like when she can be composed, like especially during a reunion and she has yes. all her notes in her head because she's also intelligent and, and the journalism aspect. She's gotten Teresa, too. Yes, she's but- got Teresa in the corner, too. Yeah, but I think in order to be like a really great reality star, you have to be constantly on your feet, ready for that that head to head. She and when she comes into a reunion or she comes into it prepared, she can cut you, Miss Merriam Webster. She knows how to really cut you down and throw their dicks, yeah. and and she's smart. But it's in the scenes where she's caught off guard that she cowers and gets too the hot. Coke? Up. She got her with that Gia with the coat. That was a good one. 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 She made her lose her ish. Like, I I like a good Jackie and and Teresa fight because it's like, it's kind of like a a battle of one is is, is her one superpower is like that. I'm from Paris old school Jersey. And then the other one is like, but I'm smarter than you and I'm not afraid of you. And Mm. I think they do a good, there's a good beef there between them. I also seen that they hadn't followed each other as well, even though they were gelling seemingly in in the beginning of the season, Mm -hmm. going on double dates and what have you. I cannot wait to see this season. I'm really excited about Jersey. I am got to make up for New York. And I love that these girls are starting to stand up to Teresa. I like that people aren't afraid of Teresa anymore. And Teresa doesn't seem to have that power and control over the show that she did in previous seasons. Like I Teresa- wish Dolores would, would stand up a little bit more to Teresa as well. I feel I like Dolores is way too team Teresa and it annoys me sometimes because it seems like Dolores had kind of like right is right, wrong is wrong personality, but she makes those exceptions with Teresa. So mm-hmm. it's kind of giving me like a Rena Erica Jane vibe. Like, why do you keep taking up for her? Yes. Yes. I'm ready for Jersey. I'm ready for the rest of Beverly Hills. I don't want it to end. I want it to continue. I want them to be filming all of this right now so that we can watch another season after this season. But I think what production does is because of the juice, and because of the trial, I think that they're going to give them a really small vacation gap and start refilming. Oh, again. yeah. 
Yeah, because that's... They, they do different gaps with different casts. Like, I've heard it. they're not going to do Atlanta until, like, 2022 or something. Yeah, Atlanta is delayed. New York is delayed. I mean, but it's, like, it's Ooh. not anything shocking. Like, they delayed OC, and now OC's filming again. They delayed Vanderpump Rules for a whole year, and that just finished wrapping. So I think they're now realizing that rushing all of the shows to production and then rushing them to air is yeah. not the way to it go about it because work. then it gets sloppy. Gets yeah, yeah. Or it doesn't work as the case with York. You know, like COVID was just not a good time for New York. Yeah. And and it was forced. It was a very and then with all the social issues that were going, it was very forced casting that did not work. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, I, I'm team New York is my favorite, has been my favorite franchise for a really yeah. long time. Not only uh, on the Bravo spectrum, but in the history of TV, period. They have given us some really yeah, iconic -ish. They have. So I know they're not going to sit here and try to cancel it. Like, I've heard all these rumors, all the New York rumors. I'm like, there's no Ugh. way you can cancel that after one Bad, horrible yeah. season. Yeah, no, I I mean, to be fair, the last season wasn't that great either that I think we've had two. I mean, this season's really bad, but last season wasn't great either that I think they need to take that break to get the show back on track. That way it doesn't continue to deteriorate the way like OC did. But we'll see. We shall see. We have a lot of new content coming out. I'm ready. I'm ready for it. Where where can we give you a follow and keep up with more of your hot takes? Oh, uh, me? Mm hmm Oh, Drag Me Monique is my IG handle right now. I'm still developing my page. I, I'm also a, um, an actress and a mom on the side. So uh, I ha I was very booked last week. Finally SAG eligible. Um, yeah. However, with that being said, yeah, I know. So um, with that being said, I will be doing a lot more commentary. I really feel like that's my strong point. I make memes every now and then. But speaking of memes... I don't know if you watch Shaws, but if we have time to get I into Shaws, Ooh, I, love Shaws. I would really like to get into Shaws. What are, um, what are your thoughts on Shaws? So I had just seen uh, Mercedes went on TikTok and was like going off on Gigi for calling Mike Shoehead's mom the B word. Oh, yeah. Like, and you don't do you're that in the Persian culture. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm sorry, but I'm really sorry. But actually, Mercedes, dirty voice. Actually, I do recall Reza in season one calling your mom both a bitch and a hoe at the reunion. And you are still friends with Chi. You don't remember when he, he did that? No. It's like, I remember it clear as day because that's when I was like, I would never be friends with someone who crossed that line. Yeah. He said that he was like, your mom's a B and a hoe. Da, 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 da. And obviously he was talking about our beloved Vita. Who is like, you know, Vita's hard to like on TV. She's easy to love. But I can imagine in reality, Oof. I'd be like, oh, I don't want to be around Vita. No. But, you know, and it's like and, and then she was going off on how it's so disrespectful in the Persian culture. And like, listen, I love Mercedes for TV, but she some of her actions are so deplorable. Who are you to make a moral stance or take a some kind of cultural high gr ground when you literally send pictures of your boobs to your male friends while you're married. And like, like you, Mercedes is not the person to do that. I haven't written a comment about it, but like, yeah, Shaz, man. I'm like, what is going on with Shaz? I love Shaz, but I, I don't think I could ever be friends with anyone from there except for Sherv. Oh, maybe Sherv. Um, I love Shervin or T. I love Shervin. No. And I saw your interview with Golnessa. I love Golnessa on TV. She's great for TV. Yeah. But it's like, I don't, I just don't understand their, the dynamic between them. Yeah. That whole cast is super, super toxic. It's very toxic. It, what it is, yeah. Toxic. What it is, is it's a bunch of toxic people being friends with each other to create this more toxic environment. I love Shaz. And I think MJ's probably going off on Gigi. I think this gives her a reason to continue to dislike Gigi. Like this continues to fuel their feud for MJ, that that's why she's like, I'm going to blast Gigi because now I have a reason to not like her again. You've been watching White Lotus, right? Oh, I just finished it. Yes. It's 
Is is MJ not the Jennifer Cooley? Yes. Uh, of White Lotus. Yes. So good. That's such fascist. a good comparison. Oh my God. Yes. Yeah. She is. So I made that meme. I put it on my page, and I was just like, you know. And then I've I also made a meme with um, Ashley Sun and, yeah. and the the actor from Step Brothers. Mm. They look so much alike. Yes. And, you know, my, developing my page is I don't ever want to be super mean or anything like that. And I'm like, I don't think I'm being mean though. They do look like the resemblance is uncanny. They even have the same hairline with the curls, the smile. It's so funny. It's so funny. It really is. I loved White Lotus. That was a great show. It oh. was great. And they're making the season two with all I'm different. Uh, yeah, that's what uh, I, I uh, that's what I figured they would do is make a second season focused on the hotel, but with the new new residents coming into the hotel. Great show. Um, I, I've been to that Maui and uh, I mean, that uh, seasons in Maui, the White Lotus was filmed at and it's pretty amazing. So, yeah. So, go. yeah, so I was, can't wait for the next. I loved, loved, loved the interview with Gigi. Thank you. Thank I, you. That was I mean, she's feisty. Great. I love her. Like like you said, I love her on TV. I don't know if I would ever want to be friends with her personally or date her. Like, I just feel like I don't know if I want somebody like that in my personal life. However, right. loving her on the show. And I love her in my interviews because she really, I mean, all of them, I think of, I mean, more than the Vanderpump cast, like the Shaw's cast really just lays into each other, but then they find this year year was hilarious. And can we talk about, I love Tommy, Tommy reading to his son and his his New England or New York accent. It's just like the icing on the cake. Like he would be a good host for, uh, oh, when he said destiny looks like the count. Uh, I cannot unsee it. I can't unsee it. I cannot. I think he would be a good host for a Bravo chat room. Oh my God. No way. No, no, you don't think so. I can't (laughs) with Tommy. Tommy makes me cringe. Tommy makes me cringe. I love Tommy. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, you know, finally, we have a disagreement. There I love go. Tommy. There he likes go. my life when he comes on screen. Mm-mm. Tommy does not. Tommy makes me cringe. I. You can keep Nima on my screen all day. I'll even take Really? Yeah. yeah. Do you think Nima and Garcelle, by the way, would make... By the way, Zach, huh. do you think Nima and Garcelle would make a good couple? Interesting question. Um... Maybe? He hollered at her on Watch What Happens Live. Kind of, he hollered at her. I actually don't hate that idea. I don't know if I fully stand it, but I don't hate that idea. Right. I don't fully support it. Like, I cannot confirm nor deny. Yeah. But oh my God. Garcelle tweeted. She was like, call her at me, you know. Garcelle loves it. Garcelle loves all the social media attention. She is living for it. And you know what? I don't hate her for it. Like, go get your paycheck, it's get perfect. your fans, do your thing. Um... Thank you so much for chatting with me today and breaking down all the latest Bravo news. You'll have to come on again. We'll have to do this again soon. Everyone can, Absolutely. Everyone can go and give you a follow at Drag Me Monique, right? That's your... your Drag Me Monique. That's, that's my handle. Go and give, Drag go, Me Monique. Go and give her some love on the Instagram. Check out her commentary on the Instagram and her memes. The account. I'm, in, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. And I love when she pops into my lives and we spill some tea. Thank you so much for having me. It's Thanks, been so love. much fun. Cheers, guys. Can't yes. wait to get my drag me Cheers. Now. Yes. Guys, Cheers. you can order you can order your drag me wine, your no filter wine at nofilterwine.com. Give me a follow at just plain Zach. Give the show a follow at no filter with Zach on the Instagram. You can join our private Facebook group and get ready this Tuesday night. We're going live again for Bravo's book club. We're breaking down Make It Nice with Dorinda. Uh, by Dorinda Medley, not with Dorinda Medley. She won't be there, but we will be talking all about her. So definitely go tune in this Tuesday, 6.30 p.m. Pacific. Also going live Thursday nights, as we always do, spilling the tea. So I will talk to you guys then. And then I have Dr. V on my podcast this Wednesday. So get ready. She is giving us some real straight celebrity dish on these relationships that are real juicy. And she's giving me a little bit of dating advice that we all know I need. All right, guys. Love you. I will talk to you tomorrow night. Bye.